Hi, welcome to the Mohua Show. My name is Mohua Chinappa and I am an author, entrepreneur and ex-housewife. This podcast is about everything from business to technology to arts to lifestyle but done and spoken imandari se. Hi, in today's episode, we have with us Partho Sen Gupta, a renowned contemporary artist. Partho has a unique approach to art. He has captured the hearts of art enthusiasts across the country. So we'll be discussing his journey as an artist, his recent exhibitions and his upcoming projects. So just to begin the podcast, the first question that I want to ask you, Partho, is that when was that Eureka moment when you decided to become a full-time artist? And didn't your parents, siblings or girlfriends tell you, come on, Partho, that's just a hobby. It can't be your profession. Uh, girlfriends, I love the word girlfriends. Yeah, they were girlfriends and they were uh, dad, mom, uh, dad was an engineer and uh, he, I think, had some issues. Everybody uh, was surprised when a son of an engineer <laughs> wanting to be an artist. Yes, of course. But then um, I guess I didn't have much of an option because those days uh, nothing was there besides uh, engineer, doctors and whatever. So, yes, I kind of uh, had a had a uh, touch and go with art at that point of time. And I was drawing from a very early stage. Uh, made my first pick up when I was four year old and uh, my teacher told me it was beautiful and I think that started me off and eventually after school I decided to join the art college in Kolkata and uh, which was of course an eye opener uh, ha- having artists all around me and famous artists that too, uh, big names who were already there uh, kind of instigated me uh, and kind of encouraged me to do better work and uh, but uh, you know what happened i i kind of veered towards advertising because that was the first job uh, uh, when i was kind of in first uh, final year of my college and i ended up uh, in lintas uh, low lintas and i started my work then as so happens like you know advertising sucks you up big time man you know, you know it, it's just a lot of work a lot of uh, unearthly hours that you have to keep so um, the mind would be still in pure art form but uh, physically, I would be in shoots and films and, you know, offices, late nights, in studios with photographers. So, uh, yeah, it, it was a divided time always. But now, as I grow older, I have now, uh, you know, the, the whole uh, the, the euphoria of just sitting in front of a large format painting and seeing it coming alive. Is just beautiful. And I think that's my Eureka moment when I look at my painting and say, hey, it's like really talking back. You know? So so that's a beautiful moment. And that keeps on, keeps on, uh, you know, uh, fueling my, uh, you know, endeavors. And as I, as I work, I have a, I have a job, but uh, the art is my background. It's my foreground, everything. So it's really interesting, you know, before I get down to asking you about your recent exhibition, do you think the life of an artist is fairly quite lonesome it's quite a lonely journey because you know it's uh, it's work between you and your canvas you and your thoughts um so do you ever go through the angst of an artist oh yes uh, you are so right actually uh, what happens is you are your best admirer and you are uh, your worst critic i think and that that's what keeps on happening uh, and i think we keep on doing that uh, uh, with with all 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 of my work, I keep on doing that, and there are so many rejects, uh, so much of despair, uh, uncertainty, because not everything that you do uh, needs to sell or find a buyer or find a home or find a wall. So, uh, first thing is how much uh, how much are people liking your work? So you, you have to decide whether you want to be popular or you want to make a name or you want to just kind of uh, hit the buyers. Or you, uh, you you do something that people never understood or understand. So, so I, I, th- I think that whole, uh, in this whole kind of a confusion, I, I have chosen to make art popular. So my journey is not about just art for art's sake, but art with media, art with some kind of infusion, some kind of an idea, some kind of a purpose, uh, kind of makes art more relevant to you and me. And also it becomes a kind of a beacon showing some light in some dark corners of life. So I would like art to be that way. 
what about the fact that you know this this entire intersection that you spoke about you know about choosing that right path because coming down to the right path isn't an easy uh, process at all it's a lot of hit and miss because as an author myself and as a writer and as a podcaster i'm constantly weighing out do i need to do content that would be sellable or do i want to do something that my heart reaches out to you know so when did you come into this entire understanding that you want to do art that you know will be popular and um, you know and just a basic understanding between you and your medium yeah absolutely and you know uh, you're right absolutely right because that struggle is for you as a podcaster as an author the same struggle goes with me as an artist or as a creative person uh, because at the end of the day you are creating it for the man or man in the mirror and also creating it for the man outside the mirror so the outside the mirror uh, you don't care two hoots most probably because uh if you start taking critiques seriously then most probably you will lose it and and you know uh, we are in the world of instagram we are in the world of facebook and stuff like that where looking at art is so easy and getting inspired excuse my french uh is is like you know you you kind of get swayed with so much of art so much of technique everybody is doing live art everybody is doing gyan talk everybody is showing you the way to do it uh, there are videos which show you the process of art coming alive uh, thank god uh, you know people like rafael and you know the tutorials of the world didn't have instagram but imagine emulating each other and then you only have one artist and one kind of work and not so much of variation van gogh thankfully didn't have uh, instagram and he he just followed his passion his way of working Uh, i'm sure he wouldn't have been uh, you know uh, a popular person that time and and when he st- he was doing his work people maybe rejected him but then he kind of uh, stuck to his technique his work his style and that's become one of the most popular thing now of course he lived, he, he did not live to enjoy the whole all the glory and you know uh, name but at the end of the day he is an institution he still is an institution to so many young artists and i think at the end of the day you have to find what you believe in and stick to it because people will be swaying you out and ye kan ye karo ye sahi nahi hai and all that i think you have to listen to your heart and do what you would want to and what you should be known as and what your signature is how phenomenal is this because i'm all the time inspired whenever i think about the way van gogh actually swallowed a whole uh, tube of yellow paint to be happy let's just talk a little bit about your exhibition unpacked i know and it's huge success so can you tell us a little bit about the inspiration behind it and how you came up with this entire concept yeah no to be very frank uh, it all started on a very dark note because that time we were all going through the pandemic the lockdown the very intense lockdown during the second wave where people were just falling and you know they were passing away and uh, there was sorrow there was despair disdain and uncertainty all over the country all over the world right and uh, my house was no different every day we were getting news of some friend passing away and it was sheer despair you know didn't know what to do actually and um, so people were trying to grasp various ways of making happiness happen i had my own ways so we we as a family we started investing in stuff like for example we would do a lot of e-commerce because amazon was delivering some stuff some chroma would be delivering an ac or somebody will be buying a new fridge what is to happen is this product is to come home but the product would be you know uh, unpacked and we would kind of keep it ready we will start using but somehow the boxes would never leave home because there was no kabadi wala taking it away so those boxes started piling up uh, and i told my wife that listen why don't you just keep it in the studio because uh, i have a studio and you can keep it here uh, so that it does not mess up the drawing room and those boxes started to look at me and started to talk to me you know i i, I was like smitten i absolutely i thought the boxes were looking great the texture looked great so why don't i start using those boxes as an extension of my work and that's how the inspiration journey started and i started using those box extensively uh and what happened is i i used to go to my friends places sneak out boxes because those days you were not even allowed to go to your friends places um so i would go secretly you know smuggle out these boxes from them as well from their houses 
from uh, houses in my own uh, you know uh, uh, rwa so all these boxes started piling up and i started using these boxes as an extension to art so uh, so to every painting every artwork in my show unpacked was talking about some happening that happened during that lockdown so it could be uh, poetic it could be chaotic it could be about death it could be about life new babies being born uh, uh, a baby born and then dying so, so so it was it was complete up and down okay it was never a plateau it's just not art for art sake as i said there was a purpose to it people what people loved is each artwork started talking to various people somebody said yes i know man you know i i had these boxes at my home you know you have done something wonderful with it and then i got big brands like ikea and you know hdfc and people like coming to me and said listen can we collaborate why can't we use our own boxes amazon approached me this listen can so it got a lot of conversation started and i think art and me as an artist i think it was so important to have this conversation started to make people aware that yes nothing goes back into the dustbin there is a sustenance there is a art for sustenance that we should look at and we should look at circularity in you know art and sustenance that is important for human kind not only an artist but everybody i think everybody should do it you've experimented with various media and styles of art you know which medium do you enjoy the most and why do you enjoy that medium so medium when you say medium i i would presume that uh, Uh, you're talking about the stuff that you use to paint right so yes. in fact uh, i have i have i have experimented with lot of stuff you're right in, in fact uh, interesting question here because during that whole lockdown series that i did uh, unpacked i i ran out of color uh, and my black uh, you know uh, acrylic color it, it dried out and i couldn't just go across to the nearest uh, supplier or vendor and buy it because everything was shut right so what i started doing is i started collecting kajal i started painting with kajal i started using oil as in uh, you know sarso ka oil and all that whatever was available i had much, i didn't have much of a choice you know sindoor uh, kajal so i started using them punching them with my color mixing it and then using it uh, to my best ability and i think that got a huge response people loved it so i never have stopped myself uh from using anything so i worked on pvc sheets i worked on surfaces walls everything so a lot of people said are tumne <laughs> so like for example uh, uh, my son was doing an interesting uh, painting on the wall okay and we have we, we are in a rented premise and everybody who has walked into my home has asked me they have never failed to ask me keep this in this is a rented premise why have you painted it here you can you can never take it back right i said so what it gives me joy right it, it 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 whatever he has done it gave him immense joy and that is something that you take in your heart not the painting so amazing my god i'm completely drawn because you know it takes me back also to this dhaba in kolkata you know called azadind where there's a painting of mf husain on the wall and you know that's uh, now been covered i'm sure he must have been to one of his moments too when he just painted on this dhaba wall so you know now the most interesting question that i can't wait to ask you is about the collaboration with shantanu moitra on the songs of the river you know tell me a little bit it's so fascinating you know can you tell me a little bit more about the process of creating the paintings for this project and what does the river ganga mean to you this is a story that i keep on telling my friends and my followers everybody i think uh, you know uh, it all started about 4 4 or 5 years back when me and shantanu had met up and we discussed uh, a few ideas that we wanted to collaborate on uh, and uh, he said listen i want to do this journey by the ganga i said ha huh, so what you know everybody does these journeys so what is so unique uh you know it started off that triggered that whole friendship that i have this is so precious friendship that i have with shantu and uh, he set me thinking he listen what is ganga to a music director and a composer and what is ganga to the rest of india not the northern part of india where where the river actually flows so a lot of questions came to my mind if you ask somebody in maybe uh, maybe in uh, down in tamil nadu or somewhere they will say ha uh, ha ganga is a, is a dirty river uh, where you just kind of uh, you know have dead bodies floating and stuff like that uh, i don't think they have much to offer 
when it comes to Ganga. And if you ask a young person, uh, the youth of India, they'll say, hell, man, it's, it's a very dirty river. Please don't talk about it. I, I'm not very interested. So, uh, so actually, Ganga had disappeared from, uh, not from India, but from the heart of Indians. So we had a purpose. We had, a, we had, we had to make this journey to make it happen, make, reinstate Ganga in our hearts, you know. So, so that's how this journey started. And Shantanu being the maverick uh, guy he is, uh, he said, I want to cycle all the way from Gomuk to Ganga Sagar. <laughs> a lot of people said, no, 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 don't do it. It's too uh, strenuous. It's absolutely uphill. But he, he was absolutely hell-bent on doing that. And kudos to him that he could undertake such a journey, such a beautiful journey, such an awe-inspiring journey. And he completed it. Obviously, with a lot of uh, you know effort from his team, the crew, his wife Sharuda, everybody as a ramrod straight uh, support for him, you know. Um, so, so what happened is we started planning this journey, and as we went about, I also found a purpose in the entire thing, and I told Shantanu that I would want to paint as you go about. Uh, I would want to paint uh, some kind of portraits or life around Ganga. And I was not talking about the normal boat reflection, mandir and, uh, you know, flags fluttering, sadhu babas. I was not talking, I was not going that way. I wanted to show the river for its human capital, not the geographical capital. I was looking at the human capital. I was looking at the people who make the river, the river that it is so Ganga is not just water, it's not silver. It is about so many people who thrive on both the banks and they make the river come alive. And that exactly was my purpose. So what I did was I started collecting Ganga ki mitti and Ganga water and Ganga flotsam. So it could be flotsam, it could be uh, stuff from a temple or a mosque. I just collected stuff. Even collected ash from these uh, uh, Havan Kund, you know, and I kind of put them in mixers, grinders, and made it into fine powder, mixed it with the color so that the color was absolutely holding Ganga in its DNA. And then the color was used to paint. So I have essentially made figurative work, portraits, figurative work with uh, animals, with birds, with, with fishes, with aquatic life, which keeps Ganga clicking. You know? uh, so that's, I think that was the whole uh, DNA of the, of the painting that I did. And if, so even if you kind of close your eyes and actually touch the painting, you will find the texture of Ganga as you feel with your fingertips. So it's as, as uh, simple as that. And Shantanu most graciously invited me to be part of this beautiful web series that you can see on uh, Disney Hotstar is called Songs of the River. And uh, I, I have a little part to play in it. And I'm so thankful that I, I, I'm a part of this epic journey. And uh, we have concluded the journey and the journey is over, but the, the, the effects remain in the entire crew's minds. And I, I, I treasure Ganda in my heart nowadays. I don't need to travel to a Varanasi or a Sasaram or, or Gobok. Oh my God, this was beautiful. I mean, I traveled with you because I was, you know, towards the end of last year, you know, in November, I was sitting in this really high cafe in Rishikesh and I, it is one of the most surreal, um, you know, experiences. And like you said, that I don't need to travel to go to Ganga. I have Ganga in my heart. But, uh, you know, I need to know a little bit more from you, Partha, about all the amazing people that you worked with. I mean, you've done things with Chantanu Moitro. You've also worked with Jack Suraya, one of my favorite, favorite writers. I mean, when I fell ill, it was Jack's writings that I kept reading to keep myself feeling alive because I had this crazy autoimmune disorder. And I used to keep rereading and rereading Jack Suraya and... Uh, so tell me a little about that and tell me about the other man that I completely crushed to death, Nasruddin Shah. Tell me all the work that you've done with both of them. Yes, both of them. Both of both of these guys, Jag and Nasi. Uh, both of them, such awesome people, such superhuman, actually. And uh, Jag Suraya, of course, uh, needs no introduction. And uh, I found him in TOI. Uh, 
and uh, you know he would he would just sit there uh, you know uh, he would come for 2 hours write uh, on piece of paper so he would always put pen to paper he would never type okay he would put pen to paper and uh, these brilliant uh, satire would flow from his pen on paper and i would just just watch him write you know i don't know how he would write all those things so so one day he just uh, we just met and i showed him some of my work i had done a lot of cartooning work for asian age telegraph uh, while my growing up years and i showed him the work he liked it and i, I was of course on uh, in cloud 9 literally and uh, a few months down the line and he actually called me said listen partho my partner uh, nilab uh, is quitting uh, why don't you uh, moonlight with me i said wow <laughs> couldn't be anything bigger than this man i would want to do it i'd love to do it and uh, i we started working together we, we took out this uh, political satire and current affair uh, strip called just in case uh, j e s t just in case and just in case was perhaps one of the most tweeted uh, cartoons uh, from the toi stables that time and uh, jagan me just loved doing it and uh, so much of me so many uh, so many people started following uh, indians across the globe started following and it was it was a high it was a different kind of a high because you are commenting on the socio political uh, uh, setup of a country and there are people who are either liking you or they are hating you or because there was no mid base but uh, fortunately for me more likes there would be so so the biggest high in that was one of my friend school friend from his whatsapp group retrieved one of my cartoons and sent it to me saying this is this is doing the round just like gone viral and when i saw who has done it i find that it is my school friend who has done this and i really am so proud of you and that really really clicked to me you know this is little small things but i really felt so good and i thanked him i said this is it has been ages let's meet up let's catch up and you know these things actually start conversations and i love conversations and this is how this entire uh, just in case journey unfolded and i'm so thankful that it happened in my life and i came to know uh, a superman called jag suraya who just refuses to not laugh and and he he makes us laugh he makes us wonder he makes us question so he's he's awesome and as we speak as we as we record yeah as we record this he is touring uh, his favorite country italy with his wife bunny and they are as of now having a great time out there and thank you jack if you are hearing this <laughs> love you so that's that that was jack soraya and uh, like you asked mahua about nasib din shah well i have been a big fan of him and uh, uh, like all of us love his work and uh, absolutely in awe of him what what triggered this is when i was a kid and was in school i think class 11 or 10 11 most probably 11 and i think par uh, his first film was released uh, directed by uh, none other than gautam ghosh and it was a superlative performance okay him and uh, shaban azmi and it was brilliant okay and uh, when i saw it i was like absolutely taken and i i, I thought this man was like awesome i don't know where he has come from and those days were the uh, days of you know uh, absolute uh, so called the hindi hindi movies you know where you have uh, people like uh, chitendra and all that people prancing around in a white uh, white pant and uh, white shoes and here was this guy who was very unfilmy and uh, had a very unconventional look and he could play a poor man and he could play a rich man in the same kind of breath and but also look different i've never seen nasiruddin in his films i've always seen the character he plays and that got me thinking you know we could actually collaborate do something together but of course distant dream why would a nasiruddin shah even uh, listen to somebody called partho but what happened is i made a picture of him after after watching par i made a little sketch of him and those days we had film fair uh, and and uske piche used to have these addresses of of, of the celebs of these actors 
and one could actually write to them. I'm talking of the days of pen pal and stuff, right? Mm-hmm. And I did the sketch and I sent it to the address, saying that I would want it back with your signature. And of course, I forgot about it. But in 20, 25 days time, it actually came back to me with a signature, with a message from him. And I hit the cloud nine again. And it was so beautiful. I pranced around my entire neighborhood, showing every friend that, hey, man, I've got a letter from Nasib, Nasibuddin Shah. And so it was, I, I was overjoyed. I was like, actually, I had no words. So, uh, of course, again, I kept it packed somewhere. And, of course, we forgot about the sketch. And uh, after, after many, many, many years, uh, my friend, uh, Vivek Agniotri, uh, he saw uh, this sketch which I had posted on Facebook. And Vivek uh, told me, listen, this is a brilliant sketch and I happen to be going to meet Nasir right now. Nasir wali meeting wali. Can I show it to him? I said, by all means, Vivek, I would owe it to you, man. And he went and showed it. And then Nasir Sahib wrote back to me saying that, listen, I remember you. Let's connect, let's touch base. And then that's, I think that was the start of it. And we connected back and now we are planning a show uh, where I will be talking about how I will be I will be doing art around him. Okay, it will be celebrating his life, his work, uh, but through a interesting angle of books. Yeah, and I don't know how many of you know, but he has already got one of his books published, which is a fantastic account of his life, his work, his family his uh, Bachpan. So please check it out. Check the book out. Beautiful book. And uh, so so I I am trying to work around that book and also the books that he read and he grew up with. So it will be a very, very interesting, uh, uh, what do you say, uh, uh, interesting chapter unfolding soon, inshallah. But look, it all depends on how things kind of roll out and how I can work around uh, getting those paintings done. It's an uphill task, but I'm very hopeful, fingers crossed, Boma. I'll need to be invited for this, Partho. I need to sit there and watch Absolutely. you do this. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm so more than happy. <laughs> Partho, I need to ask you something that's really, really awe in I mean, I'm in awe and jaw dropping. You actually worked, uh, you know, as a jury member for Project Roshni, an initiative by the President's Office to encourage creativity in underprivileged children. Tell us a little bit about this. Well, it was very interesting, Namuwa. And uh, yes, it was an eye-opener for me as well. I, I was not aware that kind of uh, talent existed in our country. And that too, at that level where we're talking of uh, chota chota bachas uh, in various government schools across the country. So I was invited uh, for this occasion. It was an event that was happening at the Rashtrapati Bhavan. And uh, it's called Project Roshni and it was instituted by then President uh, Mrs. Pratipa Patil. And uh, under her, her tutelage, the entire thing came together. And uh, there were more than 10,000 kids from across the country and all from the government schools, the sponsored schools. And uh, so, so they were not really uh, well-to-do uh, pachas, but they were, uh, they were really, really hungry uh, when it came to talent. And they wanted to show off their work. So, so imagine, you know, looking at artworks from remote Kashmir or say remote Andhra at, at the same venue, uh, the, the artworks were all over the place and we were like lost in the work of kids, such imagination, such, such brilliant talent. And, you know, just to see it and imagine that these bachas, if they are fueled right, if they are, one, you know, uh, mentored right by their teachers, uh, they could go places, you know, I'm so hopeful that these guys actually come up and I can, I, uh, later on in my life, I would see their work in a more serious format. Uh, so yes, it was an eye-opener and I, I, I'm grateful to the to the uh, president and uh, her office at that point of time. And I have been in touch with the uh, with the Rashtrapati Bhavan and keep on uh, doing this on and off, which of course always excites me. And I, I go to my bachpan, you know, I, I, I cannot revisit my bachpan. It's so easy. It's so fun. You've conducted art therapy workshops with corporates and universities. So how do you believe art can be used for therapeutic purposes and what benefits can it have? You know, Mama, I have felt that uh, art is almost like music. Right? 
um, like we we switch we, we switch off the world when we switch on music. For me, I think same thing happens when you do art in a way that it can open this wonder doors, you know, literally. And you go through the wonder door, and you are in a wonderland completely. And if anything helps for the corporates or the people who are working or or students, uh, even students who are under so much of stress nowadays, if they just are allowed a window of art where they, where they are just selflessly working without the pressures of performance, so to speak, on their heads, uh, you are not judged. You're not you're not given those yardsticks. It's not a KRA. It's not an appraisal time. You just draw and you make mistakes. You scribble like Ravindranath Tagore used to. You know when he used to make a mistake, he would just scribble over it, and some other artwork would you know emanate from it. You know some other uh, beautiful creation would happen. So so there is a lot of learning in those pages by Ravindranath Tagore. So I think. Uh, uh, the same goes. I think that's art therapy, isn't it? As in, when you are writing something and you go, uh, most of us would most only tear the page and say, "Hell, you know, I, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm giving up." But that gentleman didn't. He just just started scribbling on the writing, and that writing took a form of something of a portrait of a man, a crying woman, brilliant stuff. So there is a lot of learning there. I think I think that's that's exactly art therapy. and i would like to work with corporates i would like to work with uh, you know people who are going through stress uh, apprehensions about life uncertainties about life and tell them listen there is something that you can do without the pressures of performance please go ahead and do it relieve yourself unburden yourself unpack yourself let the world see that side of you as well you could be the star the next star the next uh, hussain or anybody This is so unbelievably amazing, Parthu. This has been one of the podcasts that I've enjoyed immensely because I've travelled with you. I would like you to tell our listeners because with podcast listeners, there are so many young people who want to become artists, but they are frightened of what the future holds because there's so many artists now. And like you rightly said, that if you scroll down Instagram, there's art screaming at us every day, everywhere. What would you like to tell them that if they were to follow their passion? what would be that advice first of all i would say everybody who out, who is out there and would want to put a pen to the paper go ahead and do it work uh, relentlessly or do something every day that is important and do without the burden of showing off or putting it up or getting likes likes you will get any which ways just work for yourself like i said for the man in the mirror draw for him or her and and be happy and just be happy First happiness should hit you, then, then something, everything will come in place. You know, everything will click in place. But once you're happy, it's very important for the artist to be happy. From sorrow to happy, that journey should happen, and that will be the uh, be the showcase actually. So please draw every day. Put up your life in drawings. Don't don't be afraid. Go out and draw. Don't don't get uh, as I said. Don't get drawn into Instagram. and don't look at people's style and get get you know every day you will be revisiting your style then just be be the man that you are be the woman that you are and make that intuitive signature happen go out draw from nature draw from clouds draw from rivers and do whatever and don't don't be you know don't be dog bogged down by medium watercolor kuch bhi milta hai na hath pe just draw scribble and i think i think later on and save everything please guys save everything don't throw anything away i have done that mistake and i keep on uh, you know uh, going back i would i would love to see my art as i grew up i would li- love to see that first peacock that i drew uh, so much of inspiration has gone from there in my life but i don't have that piece of art so sad so i won't want you guys to be sad i want you guys to hold on to everything that you do don't be apologetic don't 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 uh, unlove it just keep on loving that piece of work keep everything document it and then you will see that your art your work is showing you the way not linkedin not uh, instagram nothing will show you the way it's you who will show you the way that's it thank you parthu so before we end i have this 
absolutely beautiful, famous Van Gogh quote about art. Art is to console those who are broken by life. If you truly love nature, you will find beauty everywhere. I try more and more to be myself, caring relatively little whether people approve or disapprove. Great things are not done by impulse, but by a series of small things thought together, bought together. Such an inspiration. Even when you look at his work, sometimes I thought, you know, I, I'll start copying his work and, you know, emulating him. But I never dared to. I think he owes it. Just be him <laughs> and just watch him, his work and kind of just feel good that he spent some time on Mother Earth and he gave us that incredible treasure of his work. I have been introduced actually to the world of art by my father and my mother. My mother is a very good artist. So thank you so much, Partha, for being on today's podcast. This was heartfelt. Fantastic. To you, our dearest listeners, you can find us on your favorite streaming services, Spotify, Amazon Music, Apple Podcast, and of course, on all other major streaming services. With loads of love, we are The Mohua Show, where we talk Imandari Seh.